I wondered if you might comment about veterans. Yes, and, yeah, well, and, and the veteran, veteran population, because yes, having yes. looked at some of your of your articles as well. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, we did uh, the uh, first Canadian study with, uh, with Susan Ray and I uh, that looked at uh, the homeless veteran population in Canada, and so it was very interesting when we started that work uh, because most of the literature, and still now, the vast majority of the work on homeless veterans comes from the U.S. Uh, so the pattern that was described there was people would become homeless within often six months, certainly within 18 months of discharge, uh, that it was very much related to PTSD. Uh, when we did the first the qualitative study, none of that seemed to apply. Um, we, we kept thinking we're having a sampling error. And the reason I asked Susan Ray to participate in that, because she's an expert on PTSD. Um, we weren't finding PTSD. We went to different communities, interviewed different people. Uh, we ended up with a way too big qualitative study uh, because we were looking for what was reported in the literature that we absolutely were not finding. What we did find is people talking about alcoholism. Uh, to a certain extent, other substance use, but primarily alcoholism. People talked about uh, the military as being um, very much a drinking culture that people could be ordered to the mess, ordered to have a drink with their comrades. And, and in some cases they talked about, you know, an extremely cheap um, mm -hmm. as well. So they talked about drinking a bit more during the military, not necessarily seeing it as a problem, but it was a, an important part of life and socializing in the military culture. When uh, they left and had difficulty um, acclimatizing to civilian life, it, it, it became something they drew on more often um, because it, it was something they had started to do. It hadn't been a problem. They started increasing their drinking. When, when you're talking about it, alcoholism compared to many other addictions, addictions takes a long time uh, to develop. So it's interesting that we ended up with alcoholism, which actually I have lots of experience with I've worked in an alcoholism program for, for years. My master's thesis was on that topic, but I wasn't looking for that. I was looking for PTSD. Um, so it was 10 years after leaving the service that the, the people would end up with their first episode of homelessness. Uh, so it was a very different, um, a, a different picture. So when we talked about well, what would it take to get you out of homelessness, um, they had some very specific suggestions. Uh, the need for structure was really important because it's a, an important part of military experience. And, and again, that's when I was talking about the differences uh, between subgroups. I had the study on homeless youth at the same time. The youth said, oh, I don't like going to shelters because they're too structured, too many rules. The vet said, I don't like going there. There's not enough structure. It's too loosey-goosey. Um, so, you know, again, like what you can't, you, you add it together and you got the perfect solution. They're doing everything exactly right. <laughs> But um, anyway, they they want it with addiction. Often, one of the things that really suffers is your self concept, your self esteem. They they felt that being part of the military was an important part, and so they felt that the strategies had to be focused on reclaiming that. So reclaiming their identity, they often would lie and not even say they were in the military because they didn't want to besmirch the name of uh, veteran. Um, structure, harm reduction to deal with um, uh, to deal with the addiction issues, as I say, primarily alcoholism, uh, talking about needing housing first. Uh, and then the, the other thing they felt was important was peer support, but in a different kind of way. Uh, peer support that understood that they were bridging two worlds. They, uh, because the homeless sector and the military culture are, are opposites. And so they, they felt that they were stuck between these two worldviews. Uh, and so they needed peer support from someone who had navigated that uh, and understood that, that, that very different um, perspective, that very different reality uh, to, to help them uh, both reclaim the one identity uh, as well uh, as appreciating that they were in this kind of cultural um, between place. So, so, that, so anyway, that we, we did some work. We had uh, pilot sites, Victoria, 
uh, Calgary, uh, Toronto, and London, uh, people did extremely well. It was a short story uh, with that. So what the veterans said they needed is indeed what they needed. <laughs> Uh, we, on, we only had one person uh, return to homelessness uh, with that project. Wow. Wow. Very good. Yeah. And, awesome. and um, in the previous five years, they'd have people constantly house veterans because they, they, no one likes to see a homeless veteran, but they didn't have the right kinds of support. So the, on average, they'd been uh, housed, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, something like four, four times they've been housed and lost it within the previous yeah. five years. So, so they very frequently um, had had prior attempts, but it wasn't the kind of specific help that they needed. Hmm. Very interesting. So one thing that um, I'm really, this is just comment, <laughs> but one thing that I'm really hearing um, that is quite common in, in all of your answers is really um, the disconnection. So, you know, mm. disconnection from self, disconnection, from uh, community or support yes, and absolutely. access to that. So even with um, shelters, uh, one of the things that we noticed as well is that yes, there may have been um, through the pandemic, easier access or, or a higher amount of beds available, but that people actually weren't accessing that. So they didn't feel as supported going into shelter. Um, they didn't um, supported with their substance use, their mental health, um, and they didn't feel safe on top of all the other reasons, but mostly they didn't want to get sick. So they weren't. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like we've resources. seen it all over the place. People, which cause yeah. and people are doing it as a form of self care to, to, to create that, that, uh, that distancing. I mean, yeah. people always like people make the best decision they feel they can make under the difficult circumstances they're in. Right. And, and so pe people are, are making those kinds of assessments. Well, I feel like I could talk to you all day, but I'll get to the next question. <laughs>